Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ladies Get Your Prants On. I'm your host, Lisa Lamont, and I'm here with my special guest, Alan Reed, and she's got so many wonderful things to talk about, including being Wonder Woman and being known as Dr. Fury. I had to look down here going, Dr. Fury. She was the first Filipina to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, and so welcome, Alan. Hi, thank you for having me on here, Lisa, and thank you, audience, for tuning in. Can't wait to share. I am so excited to have you. And before the show started, I was asking a little bit about your your background. And you didn't grow up. You didn't grow up here in the United States. Can you share a little bit of where you grew up and how did you end up coming to be in in the United States? Okay, so I'm Filipino. I grew up in Manila, and it was always my family's dream to come to America. So I believe when I my mother was found out she was pregnant with me. Uh, my grandmother petitioned for her to and I to come here to the States. It was a 10-year process at the time, you know, from the time you submit your name to when you're eligible. And that's why uh, when I got here, I was 10, 10 years old. It was a 10-year wait, wait period. Wow, that's a long, that's a long time. And so how many um, siblings did you have in your family growing up? Growing up, there was three of us. There's now mm-hmm. five of us with from my mom's side yes. and then my father's side i think 10 10 big big ten. big yeah, yeah. Big. yes <laughs> and so and so um you're here in in america you're living in california and so i wanted to have you on today because you are this visionary that that i met you four years ago at secret knox and then we reconnected when i went back to secret knox and you have a huge part of of secret knock you know, and I, it was so fun to reconnect with you, but I wanted to share today about you. I want, I want the viewers to be able to get to know who is Alan Reed, who you are, why, why you're doing what you're doing right now. And so can you share with us a little bit about that? Why I'm doing what I'm doing and what I'm doing. Yes. Right Um, now. um, Right now I am building on an on-camera personality career Mm -hmm. and also working with um, people who want to create or are making momentum in their lives and handling that little voice in their head while they're making the momentum in their life. Yes. I, I really enjoy growth mode and master my voices, my hangups I re- in a really unique way, one that embodies sort of more out there talents, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but use them not in isolation of these talents like you know it's all not just for spirituality it's also for success it's also for purpose work so it's beyond visioning it's about actual actualizing it, it's true you know we we spoke in the past too about you know the the fact of psychics and intuitives and and the and the woo woo can you can you talk about what your feelings are about I have a long history with woo-woo. So in the Philippines, my grandmother belonged to a set of women shamans that we visited up a mountain. Like you literally had to hike to find these women. She was, my grandmother was a healer. So were these women. Uh, But my grandmother was an entrepreneur. She was a shoe merchant and she raised seven children of her own or six children of her own. And she was the oldest of 10 kids that she also raised. So she was a lifelong entrepreneur and also healer, mystic, shaman woman. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't know that. I just, I just so, learned that. Yeah. So as far as woo-woo and consciousness, to me, it was never separate. It was always part of being a, a human being. Mm-hmm. Um, and and uh, I was really immersed in it because my, my brother was born with a brain tumor. And so we would use both science, medicine, you know, you have to get mm-hmm. surgery and all of that. Mm-hmm. And so in the recovery time and to prepare him for the surgery, we would go up to see the shamans, getting rid of old um, things that he brought into this life that influenced him having this, you know, what are the lessons we needed to learn as siblings, as his family, uh, having this tumor and also the recovery and it not it wasn't that it was watching him go through it it was me waiting for his turn and all the people in line 
you know, there were all these people in line waiting, like you would wait all night. And I would just sit there and watch these ladies work. When, when you see people in America, yeah. I mean, we are really spoiled society. I, I mean, I, I didn't grow up, you know, I, I didn't grow up with a lot of money here in, in America, but I sure had a lot more than most people had growing, growing up. And I mean, and your family really is a, a rags to, to riches story. And so what do you want to say to the, the, the entrepreneurs? Because the majority of people are, are women entrepreneurs that are watching right now. But we have all, you know, we have men and we have college and retired people. But what do you want to say to them who feel that they're stuck? Like they're really, really struggling and they feel that they don't have enough. What is your message to them? Okay, the, mo the biggest thing I hear, the most common thing I hear from women entrepreneurs is, I don't know how to do this stuff. I don't know how to do the business thing, but I'm really good at their, whatever their product or service is, right? Yeah. So they don't know how to do this, the business functioning to make that thing that they're doing successful. Yeah. And what I say to that is, that's actually second to what you know. Because you're not making that out of nowhere. You're making it because another woman, a client, your son, your child, your neighbor said, I need this in my life. Ooh. And that's plenty of a pebble. To me, much more valuable than going to Harvard Business School. Okay. Yeah. Of how to su succeed as an entrepreneur. And, and through Secret Knox, that, that, that your, your program... You have met a lot of very famous people, a lot of wealthy people, a lot of uh, movie stars and, and scientists and all that. What is your biggest takeaway that you could share with the people that are watching this uh, of what the whole momentum of Secret Knox is and, and why do so many people go to that and connect to that? What, what is your takeaway from that? What are, what are people really looking for? No one is immune to humanity. Nobody. doesn't matter how much money you have, how famous you are, how talented you are. No one is immune to transformation. You know, I've met, um, and I think of this person in particular, retired, uh, very wealthy, independently wealthy, raised his children, stay at home, didn't have an $8 million house that didn't have a mortgage and still held in him the crystal, the catalyst, this potential to grow really oh yeah, yeah. And it was around speaking so uncomfortable but it was a desire he wanted to do but he was around so many people who were going to get it getting it yeah. going yeah. after something he did not feel like he could talk to them about the insecurity behind his desire it was and very comfortable as a man to say, I'd like to go speak and be an author because, you know, I'm invented this thing. I'm famous. I retired for it. I kept all my money. And, you know, behind closed doors, which I get constantly, yeah. it, can I really do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, was, it was interesting because the, the last secret knocks we went to, I mean, you had an astronaut, you had a neuroscientist, you had in, inventors and and very successful, you had a, um, all sorts of people on there. And it's interesting, as a psychic and intuitive like yourself, I could pick up on a lot of, you know, the different, like some people were very confident speaking, but when people would like ask them questions, even though it was their expertise area of what they were up there for, I could see, I could see that coming out. So I, I thank you for sharing that because a lot of people think that, oh, once I make my first million dollars, everything's going to be fine. My life is going to be fine. And I imagine that you've also met people that do have that $8 million home that aren't happy too. You know, they're, it's, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> you're going, oh my gosh. I also want to um, ask you to, ex um, to tell us why you wore this Wonder Woman cape and how long you wore this Wonder Woman cape because you were ahead of the time. I mean, Wonder Woman just, you know, was just recently released and it's just so successful and powerful. But I know you when you were wearing this cape quite some time before. I know. When was that? Like two, three years ago? Yes, yes. <laughs> so I wore that cape every day for a year. Yeah. And it was a gesture to myself, really, to um, hold space for myself. Because I was stretched out so thin 
emotionally, physically, spiritually, I was starting to lose my own compass. I couldn't hear myself. I didn't know if the thought was mine somewhere else. Like, so it was, this cape was like, be here, be in your body, pay attention to everything around you and still pay attention to yourself. What did you notice the first day versus the 300 plus day of, of the significance of putting that cape on? from the first day and then to, to the end? Like, how did you feel the first day putting that on, seeing yourself in the mirror? Did, did you feel that instant, like, I'm owning this, or was there fear that first day versus the end? You know, I, I guess I'm so used to weird, doing weird things. Mm -hmm. I didn't even really, really realize it was a weird thing or odd thing to do until it was mirrored back to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm bringing and I'm bringing it up. And you know what was interesting, Alan? I noticed I noticed during this cape season of your life, yeah. you were also changing your hair color like all the time. Yes. You, yes. I mean, there was nothing off limits for you. No, and I and so agree. and so, there's a lot of women that are watching right now who are afraid and they're stuck. Like they're they're afraid of the woo woo. They're 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 so conservative. They can't show up and and put a wild top on or be creative or change their hair color, you know, to go, they've always wanted to be a blonde and they're afraid to go blonde. What, what do you have to say to, to the women that are watching that, that are just, they're afraid to, to stand out? First of all, acknowledge you are woo woo. You're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Inescapable. Yeah. Woo woo. Just face it. And sit with that for a while and do nothing about it if you can, but at least acknowledge and sit with those words like, whoa, I'm woo woo. I'm a little odd. I have some interesting capacities. You can call it yeah. interesting capacities until there you have is. other names for them. Yeah. Okay? You don't have to call it psychic. You don't have to call it, call it anything. I did it for a very long time because I didn't know what they were. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't until I was ready to go out of the space of I'm having some interesting experience. I just called it that. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was ready to get out of that to then I had the door to learn, okay, when this happens, what is that called? Yeah. You know, and that's when I learned, oh, I'm like a physical medium. <sighs> you know, like my yeah. body is like a live rod, basically. Yeah. You know, I, but and, baby steps, this is, and this is the baby step of it, is to just zoom back, zoom out of all the big labels and just be like, yeah interesting capacity let's call it the interesting capa capacity box yeah let's do the baby step of that yeah and when you're ready to be like okay i can accept this about myself um then go to the next thing what's the next thing you could see yourself looking at like what are you what are you experiencing and would you like to learn more about yourself from that it's true how were you named dr fury where did where did that oh name God. come from <laughs> I am so but, curious. Um, well, uh, a few close friends uh, noticed that when I put them together, you know, once they start talking, realize they all operated from the space of intuition and consciousness and including their other talents in the way they function, which is not what they reveal in their public lives. Yeah. Like they're just like business acumen, you know, smart boss ladies or smart businessmen. And then we get behind closed doors or just having a casual dinner and stuff comes up and it's like, oh, you're collecting. And everyone's talents are so different. Yeah. You know, and they'd all look at each other like, how do you have that? And how are we all sitting together? And they'd look at me like, hey. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> like, how did you find people who were all different? I said, I, I guess I needed to learn more about myself and and I saw it in other people and I just observe you guys honestly that's why I'm friends with you <laughs> yeah. well, and, and it's interesting because four years ago when I went to Secret Knox yeah I I went there as a hypnotherapist like there was no I wasn't gonna I was gonna be around all these business people no one was gonna see any woo-woo I was I dressed conservatively I was proper I didn't laugh too loud and this time I went back and I said, I'm a psychic. I read cards. I had these, I were gifted these cards over 35 years ago and, and I have insight and gifts. And boom, I'm telling you from four years ago, Secret Knox, the Lisa then versus the Lisa who just went this last time, night and day. And I'm sure you noticed me differently this time around. Oh, yes. You're completely, fully you. Oh, I'm just, you know? I'm, 
It is. And, and you're being, you're being you. Can, can people reach out to you and connect with you and, and work with you? How, how can they go about doing that? What, who, 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 do, who do you want to attract into your life? I'd like to attract people who it's worth it to them to be clear, to have clarity about their own process and who want to learn things on their own. Like I'm not going to sit here and be a codependent to you. I'm going to show you all the tools, but you actually have to go use them because I can't do the tools for you. It's kind of like healer, right? Like yep. this is why I don't do healing. I don't, I won't do healing. I'll yeah. show somebody how to do it, the mechanics of their body and their fields and what I know about it. But I'm going to sit there and tell you like, okay, you do it yourself. <laughs> yes. I, am not, I am not your healer. It's boring yes. to heal. Like, honestly, <laughs> don't bore me. It, it's like healing to me is boring because yeah. what's behind it is what doesn't go away when you ask somebody to heal you. This is so funny. This I have to say this before I forget. I think of Tony Robbins. I am not your guru. You're yeah. Alan Reed. I am not your healer. <laughs> your healer. No, no. No, no. I mean, that's what popped into my head. I went, oh, that's got to be your new tagline. I am not your healer. I am not your healer. No, because what I find is when even just facilitating, you know, in coaching or, you yeah. know, doing executive session, uh, coaching and business consulting is that, yes, you fix it in one situation, but then they yeah. go and recreate it again. Yeah. And which tells me something's up here. They didn't, they may use me as a band-aid to fix that one little situation, but they yes. never really worked in the actual problem. Yeah. And, and, and there's always deeper. Absolutely. So I no longer do that, but I am happy, happy to just share everything I know, even sequence it for them and listen for feedback, help them troubleshoot where they're getting stuck. Absolutely. Yeah. And, so and, kind of I, I love working with. And and you're also going to be on television more and more. I'm telling you, you your, your face is going to be like so well known with it. this time next year. Like everyone's going to know because you, you like, like me four years ago at secret knocks of, of not being psychic openly, even though I was four years ago, the Alan Reed today, I mean, where you were four years ago, you've come out too. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like we're, we're ready. Women are showing up in droves more, more and more. I, I want to ask you also, how did it end up that you climbed Mount Kilimanjaro? Like where, how did that happen? Well, you know, that's a big, um, a part of that is a big, a big role that took place there is my, you know, my former partner um, for Secret Knock and my ex-husband, uh, Greg. And he was running adventure clubs with Ruben Gonzalez, our mutual friend. And it was like, do you want to hike? Do you want to go climb? I'm like, well, shoot. I went to go hike those, see those shaman ladies all the time, you know, yeah. <laughs> feeling like no big deal. Sure. I'll go. Not, no idea what Kilimanjaro is, where part of the world it was. How, <laughs> no, like, no idea at all. Didn't work out. Didn't do anything. I mean, <laughs> funniest, you know, like it's the funniest story because we get there and our other hike, uh, expedition team the team uh, the folks in our expedition we're all comparing notes like oh we went to whitney and we did this and we're doing stairs of 40 flight uh towers and i was like oh my god <laughs> i should have done a sit-up i should have <laughs> done a walk I I done done a sit -up. whoa they're there what you know <laughs> uh, so I, you I, were not prepared no, I wasn't prepared at all. But here's what I know about myself. I will listen. I listen to instructions to a T. And honestly, I fared the best out of that whole group because of that. Maybe it's also my age, you know. But there weren't very many women in the expedition. There were only three of us and the rest were men. You know, that was a yeah. group of, uh, let's see, 60 plus, 74 people went up. And only three women. Three women. Wow. Yeah. And you were yeah. one of them. I was one of them. I was 27, 28. Yeah. What, when you got to the top, yeah. I mean, cause you didn't really understand where you were going. I mean, even though you knew the basics, what was that feeling like when they said, this is it, you're at the top? What did that feel like? Well, there was, there was a false alarm top. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> was like, we were hiking from midnight to about 6am to the top. 
okay? And we get to this part and the sun's rising and it's like, it starts to flatten out and I can't see any more where else to go. And I'm like, whoa, are we at the top? It looks like the top. <laughs> I see clouds, yeah. I see another mountain over there. This must be the top. And I started hearing like whispers of she did it. Oh my God, like a bunch of, in hindsight, there were a bunch of women just high-fiving you know, must be yeah. the, my lineage before me, just like, because I sat there was like, how the hell did I get up here again? What am I yeah. doing up here? And yeah. then I started hearing that. And I was like, oh, this is weird. <laughs> yeah. This is odd. What am I hearing? No, there's nobody around me. And then the guide goes, oh, we're still an hour out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, like, that is funny. I was like, are you sure I'm hallucinating and I'm hearing voices? We're still an hour out. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> that is hilarious. So, so take us to the to the real top. <laughs> yeah, the real top. Just poured pure delirium. I don't remember much of it. There's pictures yeah. to prove it. But I don't yeah. remember much of it yeah. because I already thought I was at the other top. My energy was totally expended yeah. from that. And uh, at that uh, at that um, altitude. The air is so thin, and literally your footsteps. See, if these were two little feet, you mm -hmm. literally went like this. Each footstep, you were going that slow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Was there ever any moment on that trip that you were afraid? No, but I was pissy. Yeah. I really was. Um, I had a few hot moments there. <laughs> I have to admit, I wasn't always on my best behavior, yeah. and I felt crazy for it, and I felt like I was looked at, I was crazy for it, because yeah. there was no bathroom, and there was not much accommodation uh, as a woman, I felt, yeah. made for me, like, we ladies squat, we don't just go walk off somewhere <laughs> and stand and go, like, yeah. so when I have to yell, I need to go to the bathroom, they, the whole thing will literally just stop, and it's like, okay, go, and it's like, I have nowhere to cover up. I can't just do this like you guys can. Yeah. You know, and after have after like a few of that, I literally burst into tears. I was having a fit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it was like, God, where is the consideration around here? Like, there's just some ingrained uh, things that they just don't think of. You know. Thank you, thank you for sharing that because a lot of people won't share that other side. But my takeaway from you sharing that is there are so many things out there that women aren't thought of, you know, that includes oh. women astronauts and, and, and things like that, that I learned, you know, from having, you know, Scott that was there talking, you know, later on, I was asking about that. There are so many things like you notice, it was a majority men, but there were still three women and there was no, no thought of that. There isn't. And it was like, uh, well, that's a big enough rock or a big enough bush. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't feel safe. It doesn't feel secure, but they didn't think of any of these things. You know, they're not that conscious yeah. or whatever. As yeah. long as the back is turned, they're good. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, mm -mm, don't fly with me. And so, so the, the, the takeaway that, that, that I get from the, the, you know, the reason there's a reason I bring everything up. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so my, my takeaway from your Mount Kilimanjaro is for women, we need to ask more questions, right? We need to ask um, about when we go to an event, what's going to be there, who's going to be there. We don't ask, we just, we like, we just go blindly. And I have to tell you, even when I went to Secret Knox four years ago, I, I read Greg's book. That's, that's why I'm like, I just love your book and it inspired me. It's like, well, come to Secret Knox. Okay. You know, I didn't even, I didn't ask any questions. I didn't ask who's going to be there, how many people are going to be there, what's going on. But sometimes we have to go with our gut too, which brings yes. me back to, we have to ask questions, but sometimes we have to just go for it. We have to follow our intuition because I'm telling you, Secret Knock down there was a game changer for me. It really was. And you know, the thing is, you know why I cried? It wasn't because they kept forgetting. It was because I was afraid they viewed me as crazy for asking. Really? Yeah. It wasn't because I had to ask over and over. It was because <laughs> I was like, you think I'm crazy. Like, you think this is crazy. This is not crazy. You know, and as a woman, I was driving, you know, on my way here, um, I'm dropping Colt off. And I was like, wow, you know, women's kryptonite right now is being called crazy, being asked mm -hmm. to calm down. Yeah. yeah. So if we could work, you know, in ourselves and neutralize that, like, 
okay, I admit I'm crazy. Like when I date now, I'm like, just to warn you, I'm crazy. And I'm not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. You know, yeah, and if we have a fight. I say, I told you I'm crazy. I don't, are you surprised? Like, why are we arguing? Yeah. I told you this and you wanted to move forward, you yeah. know, to so own it. There's yeah. nothing wrong with being crazy. Yeah. You know, to me, crazy is simply a reflection of a handicap they don't have mastered. Ooh. They don't. You have me going. I've oohed like twenty times here during during this. <laughs> during, I'm like ooh, ooh. I'm just. I'm like I need. I should have had you on the show sooner, but you were so busy. So you're from the Philippines. Yeah. What can you tell? Um, and the majority of people watching are here in America. There's you know Canada and and other places around the world. What can you say to the entrepreneurs here that don't realize how easy and blessed we really are versus growing up in the Philippines and have you been back to the Philippines and, and what's the difference that you can share? Um, remember that the little problems, your little annoyances, they're made up and you make them up where here between your ears. Yeah. Okay. Most problems, gripes that this country has right now, minus abuse, minus trafficking, you know, poverty is made up. And so when you get into your little mind, as Oprah calls it, you know, your little mind yeah. of what you can't do and then this and you don't have this and you're not that and you're not enough, it's made up. Find the root of it. Work it out. It doesn't have to freeze you, stop you, or paralyze you. You're the only one in control of that. Because people, when I visit the Philippines, there's nowhere for them to even start. There isn't, there's not much choice. There, there really isn't. You know, and if it takes you for you to have that kind of example to really get it in your bones and in your muscle, go down to Tijuana. Go down there because for some people, it's not going to be enough that you and I talk about this and yeah. tell them about it. Yeah. Go be in there. Yeah. Wait, do yourself a favor and go have that trip, even if it's just for a day. I live in San Diego. TJ, Mexico is probably a 30 minute drive. You know, for anybody in Southern California, it's a day trip. Yeah. Go do it. And you, you would think of your life totally differently and all your problems, problems, you'll yeah. start quoting your problems literally yeah. because you'll come back and be like, yes, it's hard and it's shitty, but yeah. guess what? It's nothing that I, you can't see past of yeah. because there are people there who can't even, they don't, it would be a luxury for them to have the kind of problem you have. I did. Even when I've been to Mexico, you know, we go to the resorts, the five-star resorts, Puerto Vallarta, Cabo. You just go, you, you just go five miles out of town and you see shacks, you see lean tees, you see tents. I mean, we're talking just five miles out of, out of the resorts where everyone is being so gracious and kind that, you know, the people that, that work in these resorts and, and, I'm telling you, it impacted my life to, to see that here's this beautiful resort and just just outside the resort is, is intense poverty. It, it is. Yeah. And I have this stance. I think people find that this stance of mine is a little bit hard, mm -hmm. but I come from a place of I'm easily one of those girls or women that would be trafficked if I didn't get out of the streets. Yeah. And so this is very real for me. And America is going in this direction, unfortunately. Uh, our, our trafficking and child trafficking rates are very high, you yeah. know. And it's rising. It's been rising. And it's becoming a leading black market commodity, humans. Yeah. No longer drugs. It's humans. Yeah. Because humans are recyclable. And drugs are just consumables. There's longevity in humans and they're getting smart. It's not just about like taking you away now. It's like you go do what they think your job is, you know, your trafficking job. And then yeah. they drop you off at home. Yeah. You know, this, this stuff that's third world problem considered isolated, no, that things that don't affect this. Yeah. It's starting to be here and come here. Like your neighbor's daughter could be one of those. And yeah parents wouldn't even know. And I'm speaking from experience. A friend of mine is a CEO and just found out his daughter uh, is, who's in high school yeah. for the past three years has been trafficked. Yeah. He would never know. She comes home yeah. every day. Yeah. Every day. That's, that's why when, when, you know, I say to parents, know what your children are doing, know yeah. who they're communicating with. You know, my, my daughter 
who's my grandson is 15 years old and he doesn't have a Facebook account. She goes, there's no reason for him. You know, he has his friends that he can call and talk to and, and text, but she goes, there's no, there's no reason because of, of the dangers of that. And I really appreciate you talking about that topic, you know, and, and I would love to have you back when we do a show just on that so we can give some resources and, and some links and things. Before we wrap up, um, you do have this program that you have launched. And if you would be happy to share that, you would make me very happy. Ah, it's all things woo-woo. Yeah. Yay. Yay, woo-woo. So this product is called Momentum. It's actually an experience we'll get to have together. I'll give you the protocol. You will experience it for yourself. How to acknowledge, address the voices in your head. Like, for example, if you're launching a product, you're writing a book, you're writing a sales page, you're about to make a pitch, like you're just on a roll, you know, yeah. and all of a sudden that like thing that goes, are you sure you should be doing this? Should you really be charging that? Uh, what are you talking about? Why are you saying this? All of those kinds of things are exhausting. And eventually you'll find that the resistance to not think those things, to not have those things in your mind, you're tired and it's only 11 o'clock. <laughs> You know, like you're on a roll for two hours and then you're like uh, tired. Why? Because in the back of your mind, you're spending energy resisting not thinking these thoughts that are there. Everybody's got them. Nobody yeah. here, nobody that is an entrepreneur is a monk. So I know everybody's got them. Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> and so you'll find this product. It's called Momentum. It's on WooMeTV.com. WooMeTV, you'll find all like my little reels about uh, woo woo and politics, even woo woo parenting. Yeah. You know, uh, woo woo dating, all of that yeah. kind of stuff. Woo woo uncoupling. <laughs> that is so funny. And wow. I'll and I will add those links to the to the show when sure. um when, when I share it, when I share it so they can know. And and I love that you have said you embrace woo-woo because I've been kind of going like this on the time, like I I'm I'm sick of woo-woo. And why am I sick of it? It's just a word, you know? It's, it's just fun. It, it is fun. Like it's I, I better than saying spirituality. Oh. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna embrace those of you who are watching who who I've banned woo-woo. I'm embracing woo-woo back again. You're you're witnessing <laughs> it. Woo-woo, woo-woo's back. Woo-woo. I put I'm taking Don't woo-woo. Don't poo-poo the woo-woo. Don't poo-poo. I'm not poo-pooing the woo-woo anymore. <laughs> I'm embracing it. It's coming off the shelf and back onto my back onto my my desk and my heart and my soul. And it, it's so I'm, I'm re-embracing it again. So, so thank Alan, thank you so much for coming Hi. on the show today and, and sharing all your, thank your you. visions and, and insight that you're giving the, the people who are watching the show today. It's just been such a pleasure. Thank so you. we will be back next week and everybody have a good week. Bye-bye.